one, four, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Monica S. Martinez live TV show. I am your host, Monica S. Martinez, and yes, the S stands for sex. Today, I'm really excited because we have Denise Costa with us. So if you see her right there in the corner, guys, just be nice. Uh, we have, we'll have our comments live up here so that you can ask questions if you need to ask questions. She's a very interesting individual. Uh, one of the reasons we have her on is simply because not only is she beautiful and sexy, but we also have her on because she's a cuddle expert. So yeah, we're gonna get right into that soon after I give you all the updates about what we're doing and what we have going on, right? So first and foremost, we wanna thank Taino Inc. for providing tantalizing productions with our Happy Cummings logo. Thank you very much for that, we appreciate you. And also to gna.com, thank you for the wonderful headsets that you provided us with. Everyone check them out, gna.com. You know you can reach me on all social media sites, Monica S. Martinez, on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. My Snapchat is Moni226. And feel free to visit the Tantalizing Productions website for our tri-monthly Happy Comings packages, along with all the exciting toys you can bring into your bedroom. And one last thing, guys. Don't forget to visit me on monicasmartinez.com. So a couple of events we have going on really quick before we get into um, questioning Denise because I'm really excited to have her on. We want to talk about October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. So make sure you visit us on, at the South of France while we'll be doing a showcase for domestic violence shelter in the Bronx. So October 14th from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., we will be at the South of France. All proceeds will go to a local domestic violence shelter. And we have a few people online. So hello there, Ellie. Hello, Yolanda. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate you here. And thank you all for joining us every week after week after week. And another event that we have going on is the Poets Place which will also be happening at the South of France. Everything is happening at the South of France, if I think about it. And that is November 17th. So guys, you're gonna be marking this down. November 17th, we will be at the South of France called The Poet's Place. That's gonna be hosted by Santos Taino, along with my little petite self. And don't forget, ladies, October 26th, we're at, we're at South of France again for Ladies Night Out. All right, I'm just winded from all of that. So let's get into our beautiful guest, Denise Costa. Please, if you would let our fan base here and our friends know, know where, you, where you are, what you do, and all that fun stuff, and then we have questions to get into. Yeah, so I'm excited to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm currently in Rochester, New York, um, where I'm living for a few months here. And I started sexuality talk five years ago when I was and it's really um, an outward expression of my inner passion. You know, my inner passion is to help create a different world where people can be sexually expressed and sexually free. Uh, and spiritually free, and um, really heal what we need to heal so that that can happen. Um, so I'm really excited to offer, you know, a, a variety of services that really help people get there. Um, and we'll go into those a little bit as, as we go through the interview. So thank you for having me, and yeah, I'm excited to get started with the question. <laughs> So really quickly, do you have a website? Where can people reach you? So let, let's cover that first. 
Yeah, so my website is sexualitypower.com and people can find us on facebook.com backslash Latina for power, the number four power. And you can find me on Instagram, Sexuality Power, Facebook Live, Sexuality Power. I have a Sexuality Power fan page, so um, check that fan page out, hit like. And if you want to subscribe to get more information about, you know, what I'm doing, you can check it on my Instagram page this way, and there's like a link right there. That people can can go to find out um, to learn more and um, have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. <laughs> very nice, very nice. So, guys, make sure you follow Denise on her uh, pages. We will be posting the links um, in the comments. Delis already started. Thank you, there. I appreciate that. And um, we will be posting this video for future. You know. For a future reuse of it so that people can um definitely look you up and check you out so guys again if you have questions feel free to drop them in the comments and we will ask them in the meantime minds want to know on my end so the first question we have for you denise is at what age did you become comfortable with your own sexual desires and needs yeah, that's a really interesting question because I don't actually think that there's um, one particular age, right? I think that there is like an expansion and an evolution of, of how comfortable you are with your desire and your body and your sexuality. Um, so the first time that I kind of um, was brave enough to kind of start experimenting with with my sexuality and kind of owning it, um, I would say was in college. Um, you know, that's kind of where I broke away from what I was told to desire to really explore what I find and the feeling um, arising through my body. Yeah. Excellent. So, how do you help your clients release trauma or any sexual blockage that they may have? Yeah, so I've, I've been through trauma myself, and for years I was looking for what would help me release trauma, right? Because I was like, this is causing some issues in my life, and I could see the impact it was having. Um, so when my journey of self improvement and self-healing, I found several healing modalities that I've now become a practitioner of. So I use those um, healing modalities and work with the subconscious and, and unconscious mind uh, to really find the root block that's keeping people um, reliving into their trauma, right? And, and the trauma is still very much alive and present in their day-to-day -day life. So I help people release that, and then really through coaching, I help them, you know, determine what do they want, right? So it's, it's one thing to do the healing work, and then it's like, oh, well, what now? And I heal. So that's where I come in with the coaching, and I really help people um, figure out how they want to be expressed and how they want to um, have their experience. And, and I really love doing all of that. <laughs> Sorry, my dog is having a heart attack there right now. Okay. My son is walking in. Hello. Sorry about that. Hello. Sorry, my son just came home. Um, that's awesome. So let me ask you, are you certified in doing what you do? Yeah, so I've actually received uh, several coaching certifications from, you know, people who've established coaching programs to kind of guide you on how to do it. Um, I also have my master's in social work and I apply a lot of um, the social work principles and values. Um, but also incorporate the coaching model, right? Where it's more um, short term and, and more focused on 
getting you the results that you're looking for and, and kind of helping you work through things a bit faster. Excellent, excellent. So one second, let me grab more questions for you. So really quickly, what does a sexually expressive world look like to you in your eyes? Oh, <laughs> that's such a great question. Um, you know, I think a sexually expressed world to me is a world where people can literally express themselves however they want without fear of judgment, without fear of, um, you know, being harmed because of their preference and their expression. Um, you know, I, I feel like we're very far from that world, right? A world where people aren't being trafficked and used and abused, you know, for their bodies um, against the will. Like, that's just not a sexually liberated world, right? So, so all of the issues and, and the systems that I see now in place that kind of limit um, your expression, right? Even your ability to seek out health care. Right. If you if you look at that, even in our country, like there's a huge issue um, with how much access women have to everyday healthcare, like tax smears and traffic smears. Um, so a world where all of that is accessible, where people don't have to worry about where um, they're gonna, you know, get condoms. Where condoms are like regularly available and. Uh, sex toys aren't taboo and you know there's like sex positive porn and like feminist porn and porn that's like um empowering versus degrading right um all of these things are, are things that i feel um would exist or, or not exist in in an ideal world where people are completely sexually um free and express and that doesn't mean you know that uh certain things will will stop existing like you know people there's people who will be monogamous and people who will be conservative and um, people who will be polyamorous and, you know, a whole slew of combinations and all of that will be welcomed. All of that will be celebrated and, and you know, embraced. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, hello, Carlene. That's my cousin. She's saying hi. Um, <laughs> You know, that that's really awesome and what you feel is, is you know, sexually liberating um, as far as the world is concerned. But I feel like, you know, things have gotten a little better. While sex is still considered taboo to some, I feel that more people I find are more liberated now and they're a little more free than they had been in the past. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think that, uh, there, there's a lot of truth in that, in that um, things are not as hidden um, as they once were, right? So you see the LGBTQ community a lot more visible, but at the same time, if you look at you know how many trans women are being murdered on a daily basis, it, it's outrageous. Right, so there is like the level of violence has increased as well. Um, you know, if you look at the laws and the legislation, there's more restrictions on women's bodies now than you know any time you you know since Roe v. Wade. Like all of all of that progress, like now we're going backwards. So um, I really feel like yes, we have come very far, but we can't get comfortable. In that in that space, and, and think that you know it's gonna just keep getting better without us kind of putting some effort and you know intentionality into doing some of that work. Absolutely. Hi, Justina. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Um, guys, like I said, if you have questions, feel free to inbox us. We are talking to Denise Costa, who is a certified cuddleist. so far guys i mean i've never in my life spoke with a cuddle expert so talk, take us through one of your uh cuddle sessions 
and we, we use that. Um, or even in the city, you kind of bring breathers in a gentleman in, in a breather. So those are some of the, like the setup of it, yeah. So now, I mean, there's no sexual contact via these sessions. No, it's all non-sexual touch. And I think that that's something that's really important too and, and makes it different from regular cuddling is that you're, um, there's no expectation that it's going to lead anywhere. And it, and it really, it, it can't lead anywhere. Um, so that's my, my code and, and the code of, of the public. So it kind of takes out that pressure. And I'm not going to say that there might not be some arousal that can naturally happen, right? If someone's being harassed, that can happen. But that's not the focus. And we actually, you know, if me people take a break and have the person, you know, calm themselves down before continuing because it, it actually hinders the whole, the whole session. So what your majority is what female based male based or is it you know equal well i would say that the majority is, is male now i i i think that's more to do with my marketing maybe than, than anything else because i know couple is whose clientele is primarily females um or, or women Right. Um, so I think it, it just varies. For me, it's men. Um, men, and I find that it's, it's men who are either in some form of a relationship, um, but just aren't getting their needs met and, and just don't have that level of um, communication with their partner to be honest and, and express that. No. So, okay, from a whole different perspective. Would this be a form of emotional cheating or um, some type of physical cheating, seeing that your base is male based? I mean, if, if, if they can't openly express that to their wives, girlfriends, um, I mean, does this play on some level of cheating? Because in my book, I would have a problem with it. <laughs> Yeah, so it really isn't. And, and I think that the distinction is that it's, it's very much a therapeutic practice. Um, our physical needs are, if, if they're not met, like they hinder everything else. So I would, I would consider this like very similar to going to a therapist, right? And, and actually, um, Cuzzlet.com is actually partnering with companies who provide therapy like um you know institutions and private therapists as well to bring cuddling to more people who are in therapy and who do need this form of um, touch and then it's not because there's you know um anything wrong it's that they, they need touch and they're not getting enough of it you know in their day-to-day -day life so um carlene is saying if i can't cuddle him he is not for me <laughs> so uh, carlene says if i can't cuddle him then he is not for me oh yeah mm -hmm. and, and that's you know that's how a lot of people feel right there's there's the cuddlers and the non-cuddlers <laughs> is what i say like people who naturally just love to cuddle um, and then, you know, most likely for that person, their primary um, way of feeling loved is, is touch. And that's really important to, to note that, right? Because if you need touch, then you know you kind of have to find someone who also needs touch so that they can meet you at that level. <laughs> um, there's a question from Lucille. Do you go through a service or are you independent? I believe she's independent, Lucille. Yeah, thank you. I am. I am independent. All right. So um, we have another question. What do you find to be the biggest obstacle in the bed, in the bed between men and women? 
Um, well, I think that you just really answered that by, you know, saying that there's a level of communication that is not being expressed as far as um, needs being met, because that's where you're coming in. So I think. Yeah, and I would say what I found from the women that I coach and the men that I coach is that there's a way in which there is like shame enters the bedroom and it like ruins relationships because if you don't feel comfortable expressing to your partner um when something doesn't feel good or when it does feel good right like both ends of that spectrum um there there really there's no depth that you can build on in the relationship and, and really that where people get the most nourishing is when it becomes more than just, you know, the sex act. There's a deeper intimacy and a deeper vulnerability and, and, and connection um, occurring. Excellent. This is very informative. Um, so, again, thank you. Um, Denise, can you just remind our listeners and our viewers where they can? Um, find you yeah so you can find me on instagram at sexuality power on facebook.com backslash latinas for the number power and um, also at sexualitypower.com and i'm on the i'm on all the places of these go sexuality power on twitter and on you know, what is it, the uh, Snapchat, I'm on those two, I don't use those as much, but Instagram, Facebook, those are definitely the places to find me, and I have a fan page on Facebook, it's Sexuality Power, you can just type it in and it comes right up, and um, go on there and like us, and, and, you know, sign up for a session if you would like. Um, there's a link on my Instagram for that, it's a complimentary exploratory session with me. Excellent. Well, thank you again for that. Guys, um, we still have uh, questions open for her. If you want to ask away in the little comments section, feel free to do so. Um, one of the questions I was just text was, are you married? Are you speaking from experience? I am not married at the moment, um, but I do speak from a lot of my own experience. Um, I've been in long-term relationships, and I also have the privilege of coaching dozens and dozens of women and couples. Um, both men and women come to me with issues around their sexuality, their self-expression, their relationship, right? Um, their desires and, and how to express their desires or know their desire so it really it's partly lived and partly you know through my coaching what i've what i've come to know yeah excellent but i, I pull a lot of it from my own life you know I, it, it amazes me how much my own experiences help my clients work through their own stuff so i, I have a lot of those moments where i'm like wow i, I never thought that this one experience would be the experience that would help a client with um but often i'm just so surprised like that <laughs> excellent um we have another question here for you yes. i'm loving the question <laughs> do you feel toys are a good way to liven, liven up sex in the bedroom I do, I do. I think toys are great tools. Um, you know, I think that where sometimes the, we get kind of accustomed to the toy and, and it becomes almost like a replacement. I think just as long as we're kind of mindful that to keep the, the attention not on the toy, but on uh, the experience that the toy is like enhancing. And I think that that's, that's really where um, you can take a toy and like use it to maximize your intimacy with your partner and that's beautiful i think that's you know great 
Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. Um, a toy, I don't think, could ever replace um, a touch, ever. Um, just yeah, no, I don't think so either. Yeah, just in, in, in my experience, I don't feel um, that one can... Here, here goes my crazy husband. Um, he's petting me. Really? Anyway, he's so silly. Um, as I was saying, a toy, I don't, I feel like, you know, yeah, they're there to enhance and they can never really, really replace a person. Um, we do need that touch. I mean, you know, we, yeah. you, you need that. You need that in life, period, just the, you know, touch and like you said, the intimacy. I'm huge on uh, bringing intimacy in the bedroom and I'm huge on, the whole toy aspect of it because I feel like, yeah. So I like toys. Yeah, and, and I want to talk about it because the attachment part of the people, it does kind of um, the creepy face before sexuality power was kind of uh, envisioned and created. And, you know, so many women wouldn't be able to enjoy the fullness of, of their body and their sexuality without toys. So I'm like, amen, if you love toys and you want to use them for any, and, and also, like, if that's not what works for you, then, you know, that's great, too. Mm -hmm. um, whatever works for you, is, yeah. Well... See, I always encourage um, women and couples to definitely own some type of toy. And that, you know, yeah. I think the misconception for a lot of people with toys is that, like you said, they're, they're being used to replace or they get intimidated by the toy. Um, but like you, I, I like to proudly say, hey, it's here to enhance it. it for me, it's never a replacement, more, more so of the enhancement, because like you said, it brings back touch. And, and that's the ultimate goal for um, these clients, is to bring that back and to you know, liven up their sex life. So we have one last question for you. What would you consider? Oh, some men get offended. Yes, they do. And um, while toys should not even be offensive at all, because um, like Denise and I are explaining, that they're really there just for enhancement purposes. Yeah. The last question. That's like people have worked really hard to get toys. To be accessible and, and you know available. Absolutely. It's a blessing. <laughs> Absolutely. And thank the doctor who created it, who started it, right? <laughs> Amen to him. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Masters and Johnson. Awesome. Um, what would you be considered the what would you consider the best sexual position in order to give an orgasm? I don't, I don't know that there's a real answer to that, honestly, right? Because it depends on the individual. Yeah, I would totally agree with you. Um, every woman's anatomy is different. Every penis's anatomy is different. Every, you know, it, it, it's all dependent on, like, what two bodies are coming together and how they're coming together. So even from day to day, depending on, like, your own cycle, it might change. So I wouldn't say that there is anyone for even one person, right? Today it might be doggy, tomorrow it might be um, missionary, right? And that's completely different positions and, you know, whatever is bringing you the most joy and pleasure in that moment, that's the best position. <laughs> Absolutely. I agree. So, guys, if you have, oh, she, what is Ellie saying, oh, all men get offended? No, Ellie, I don't think so. Um, yeah, I don't, I, I don't think I don't think so. Um, not every man. It's just it's just impossible uh, for every man to get offended if that's what you're indicating. But you could clarify that you're not offended. Yeah, we know. 
why tantalizing started. So um, <laughs> my husband's saying, I'm not offended. I'm not offended. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Really quickly, you look super young. Do you mind if we ask? Mm -hmm. My age? Mm, around about. Yeah, so I'm, no, I'm 29. Um, I'm about to be 30 in February. So I am young. Um, I started studying sexuality very early on. I was a bookworm, and um, my body was something that just naturally I was curious about. So um, I studied some stuff while I was in, in high school and then really as soon as I hit college I just kept learning more about sexuality and um, that kind of became my major in college and then also for my master's um, so that was yeah that, that's kind of going from like a decade and stuff so <laughs> I feel old but I do know that for, for this field, I, I do look young. <laughs> I thank my mama for my team. <laughs> Excellent. Ellie is saying, yeah. well, yes, because they feel that his penis is not satisfied. Like, it's not that it's not enough satisfaction. Well, I mean, again, you know, it, it, it's an individual's view on it. However, not every single man, I mean, as we heard, from the man himself, uh, that not all men are offended by toys. Um, and again, you can also feel free to get, you know, non-intimidating toys. There are things like the silver bullet, you know, that can provide, you know, clitoral stimulation, uh, breast stimulation, and also be used on the scrotum. You know, there are a lot of um, toys that can come into the bedroom for play. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a like dildo vibrator type penis thing um, or anything for insertion. You know, we always tell our clients to start with something small, something like the bullet, uh, something along the lines of like massage oils, right? Because it, it brings back touch, it brings um, intimacy in the thing. So during your cuddling session, I. Do you bring like anything with you to these cuddling sessions? Like, do you do you bring like massage oils? Do you like like what do you do to set up the room? So, say hey, I'm I make I'm making my appointment with you. What are you What are we doing to break the ice? And you know how how's this room situated? What you know what are we doing here? Yeah, so a good usually happens either on the floor of a living room or on the couch. And what I like to do is, is if possible, right, so it depends on, on the, the living place, um, have the lights a little bit dim, if not like often just have like a lamp on. I put music, so very much uh, like a Zen meditation um calming to the sounds of nature then i also bring in aromatherapy so i'm big into like wellness the whole body um mind body spirit stuff um very holistic so i do bring in aromatherapy and their therapeutic grade oil um i both have a diffuser and then i i offer my clients to, to put some on and that really is um awesome either get grounded or relax or if they're really sleepy get a little more energy i really tailor it for the client um and then we have a lot of pillows right and it, it and it's really about making yourself as comfortable as possible in this space and then working towards what's going to get you more comfortable right maybe that's me rubbing your hair maybe that's me um Stroking your back, so I don't I don't do massage, and I and I make sure that people know that there's no massages that go on during um, a cuddling session. I do like rub someone's back, but it's not massaging. Um, and we begin by doing a small kind of like get to know each other exercise, really going over the ground rules, um, getting comfortable with one another, and then. 
kind of playing a game that allows both of us to experience both a yes and a no to a request. Um, and that really just allows you to kind of get over the idea of being told no. <laughs> right? No one likes to hear no. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's definitely something that we practice up front with our clients so that no one really walks into the session and be like, oh my God, she's going to say no to all of my desires. And I don't know what that's going to feel like. You know, it really does kind of calm and ease the person into the session, which is really nice. That's awesome. Now, are there safe words in the session as well? So there's no safe words. The agreement that you kind of talk about beforehand is that if something doesn't feel right, then you're going to speak up. Right? So that's um, saying no, saying speak up, um, saying no thank you. And when anyone says any of that, and I, and I, and I encourage everyone listening to really embrace this in their own lives, if someone's saying no to something, they're just taking care of themselves. Right? Like it's that. not personal, it's not about you, it's about what's happening in your world, in your body, and, and mind. Um, so I honor that and I respect that and, and I really try to um, share that with my clients and have that be part of our agreement in the session. So um, all of my clients have spoken up if something that makes feel good and I've never ever had an experience where someone, um, you know, completely needs uh, to stop or anything like that. Well, I mean, that's all we have for now as far as questions, and we really appreciate your time and you coming on and sharing, you know, what you do and your experiences with us. Um, we thank you. We thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, and, you know, I'm honored to have been here and, and share a bit about what I do. Um, I look forward to coming on in the future. Absolutely. Um, do you have any events upcoming that you want to talk about and share with, with everyone? Yeah, so I don't have any events, um, but I am launching a 12-week coaching program. It's, like, amazing. I've been working on it for the past year. And it's finally ready for people to really um, get the most benefit out of it. So if anyone's interested in learning more about that, they can um, contact me through the Instagram link. Um, so Central and Power on Instagram and set up a call so that they can learn more about that. And yeah, that's, that's kind of the biggest thing that I have going on right now and just kind of launching that has been like just such a wonderful experience and awesome. yeah, I'm excited to share this with you guys. That's awesome. Remind everyone where they can uh, get you at. Yeah, on Facebook is facebook.com backslash Latina four power and the four is that the number. And on Instagram it's sexuality power, on Twitter is sexuality power one and on um, my website is sexualitypower.com. You can also find me. If you'd like to sign up for a session, go to the Instagram link. That's the easiest way to sign up. And that's a complimentary time. Let's see where you can do more. It's a totally different than anything else that might um, have piqued your interest tonight. Excellent. No, I was asking you if you can tell them to turn this music down because it's getting loud. But it's all right. It's too late now. Thank you. Sorry about that. My son is playing like loud music and I didn't know if we can hear it over here. And I'm trying to make all these like sign language movements, but it wasn't working. <laughs> uh, so Ellie seems like she's interested. So definitely check Denise out, guys. All her um, sites are listed here. Make sure you visit her. Check out that 12-week session. It might be a good Christmas gift. It might be a great birthday gift. Hell, it might be a new way to start the year, guys. So check her out. I advise you to, you know, 
see more of what she offers because it sounds really relaxing. I almost could use a cuddling session <clears throat> so I can fall asleep. Um, so, yeah, if anyone is interested from the New York City area, I'll be down there um, from October 14th to the 16th. And yeah, I'm going to be doing a couple sessions. Where are you going to be staying? What part of New York? I'll be right in Manhattan in like the Union Square, Eastside Village. Yeah. You heard that from her right here, guys. She will be in the New York. Now I'm telling everyone you will be here in the New York area. So if you're interested in getting your cuddle session, Denise is going to be here. So make sure you look her up and get one. Uh, and I'm actually so good. It's, it's just kind of striking me right now. If anyone from your audience um, signs up for a couple of session, I'll definitely give them a 20% discount. Yeah. Ooh, guys, you hear that? 20% discount. Check her out. It would be awesome to actually meet you in person. Like I said, we're doing ladies night out on October 26th. So I'm not sure if you're free, if you want to come, swing by, tell the girls what you do. Yeah. You know, kind of. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, so I will have uh, actually I'll inbox you the flyer. Um, Maybe I can put your name on the flyer as well because we actually have a singer who is going to be there opening up the showcase. So, um, yeah, so I could I could put you on the flyer um, if you'd like. I can have that implemented. So we'll talk, yeah, we'll talk more behind um, you know behind the scenes kind of thing because uh, our broadcast is, is coming to an end. So I just want to thank you once again for joining us. This was very enlightening and a great experience. I'm relaxed, and you're not even near me. How about that? <laughs> so, I, I love you. I can't wait to meet you. I love you so much love. Absolutely. Have a great night, guys. Thank you so much. Guys, again, thank you for joining us week after week. We are here every Tuesday from 9 p.m. until about 9.30, 10 o'clock sometimes, depending on how tired I am. As you can tell, these eyes need some sleep. So join us. We Next week, we will have another wonderful guest, and hopefully we can have Denise back at some point in um the future so maybe Dillis can work on that with you guys with you if that would be pretty awesome to have you back and again she'll be here in new york so come check her out on october 26th and meet her in person schedule your cuddling session with her while she's here will you come to new york even if you're not here like if someone says hey i think i'm gonna do a cuddling session but i don't want to do it until november do you travel for them? So I'm very flexible. I love going down to the city and any any little reason is good enough for me. <laughs> so yeah, definitely I'm, I'm flexible. I do still travel with people in New York and I do it up here as well. So if you're always welcome to come to Rochester as well. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable with that one. Excellent, excellent. Thank you again, Denise. You have a wonderful Thank night. You. All right. And guys, again, thanks again. Make sure you visit us on all media websites, the Monica S. Martinez TV Live Facebook. We are Monica S. Martinez on Instagram, Twitter. Um, make sure you check out that Happy Coming package as well. So thanks, guys, for joining us. We will see you next week. Vessels, and have a wonderful night. Get sex wasted, guys. Good night, Danny. Bye.